Okay, uh, thank you all for, uh, for coming back. Appreciate your um, continued commitment to this process. And uh, you can see um, everybody should have picked up a packet and they signed in and I uh, should have picked up your materials and sitting at the uh, table according to the color that's on your name badge. And we've, we've got circle, circle tables for you tonight. I think it looks a lot better, a little more comfortable and a little more of a collaborative environment than, uh, than the old school cafeteria uh, tables. So, so we wanted to um, just get right into this. We have a, a, a good agenda tonight. Really our focus of tonight are to uh, share some new options with you. We have options seven through eight, um, seven and eight, that have been developed based on your input. Um, we've also, uh, once we, I give you a little review of those two new options. Um, we'd like you to break into some small groups and, uh, and, and evaluate those. And um, what we're going to do is, when, we, when you break into those small groups, we're gonna have you identify the three best things, the three advantages of each option, and the three limitations of each option, so that you can kind of evaluate them and, and as it relates to the criteria, to the considerations that we're working on. It's a little bit different, but we'd like you to, to mark up what are the be three best things and the three worst things that, as it relates to each option when you guys break into small groups. Oh, and then we're going to um, do a consensus building exercise where we'll give you some stickers and you're gonna start uh, putting stickers on, the, on the, the three maps you feel best meet the, criteria, the objectives and the study considerations. And with the focus of trying to narrow down the scenarios to a, a more manageable number to take to the public input session, public information session. So that, um, so that they have a smaller number. And also to start, with the, pr start the process of weeding some of these out that you feel may uh, that least meet the, uh, the objectives. And then finally, we'll talk a little bit about the public information session, and then we'll let you go. So a little overview on the, ob on the objectives. The, uh, this, this committee is a based, community-based group. Um, it's focusing on these key uh, factors or objectives to reduce overcrowding in the region, to create viable, successful boundaries, to effectively utilize the added capacity at the new Northeast Area Elementary School and other areas inside this study area, and then to support diversity among the schools that reflect the community and the school system. Um, this is another, just a repeat of what you've seen before, but everybody who's around the table are people who uh, are affiliated with these schools and have representatives and staff and parents at, from these schools. Uh, one thing to note with the satellite area, we are uh, limiting the, the changes in this particular process to the satellite area that exists within our study area that, that sits here between Perry Hall and Kearney um, for the Oakley, Oakley area. Some follow-up to questions that you had posed at the last, uh, at the last meeting. Um, and this was also something that we wanted to restate because there has been some information that's gone out in the uh, social media and such that may, be, that, that may not be 100% correct. So we just wanna make sure that the messaging is, is correct in terms of how, how special permission transfers work in the uh, Baltimore County Public Schools. So this re relates to the, under what conditions may students choose to stay in their school once a boundary goes into effect. And that relates to the special permission transfer policy and that is that the, the, the transfer will be approved during the first year of a boundary change for students currently enrolled in grades four and five. So the, so the rising fourth and fifth graders are, are the ones who are eligible for that special permission transfer um, uh, provision. Or, yeah, and then seventh and eighth or 11th and 12th, which doesn't really uh, impact us, um, but of the school affected by a change in the attendance area, and students express their wish to remain in the school through their terminal grade. So those fourth and fifth graders, in the case of this study, can, uh, can uh, 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 participate in a special permission uh, provision to stay at their school if they are impacted. If a student who meets the criteria has a sibling currently enrolled in the affected school, the sibling will be given the option of remaining in the affected school through his or her terminal grade as well. And if you want to look further into this, you can found it, find it in the policy in Rule 5140, and I believe that that's some of the information that was provided to you in prior meetings, or you can always go and look up uh, Rule 5140 on the BCPS webpage to find details about the, the full policy and rule that the district has. 
there was a lot of discussion at the last committee meeting about um, uh, relief beyond the study area because we've been discussing some of the areas on the southern area of this have higher utilization, Joppa View and Perry Hall, uh, uh, for example. And there was a discussion of, um, an, an in-depth discussion on w do they have enough relief in future projects if you don't bring them into, if you don't give them relief through this project, will they have relief in the future? And so there's some, a couple slides here to kind of give you a, a feel for what is coming down the road. So schools for our future plan and BCPS FY 2019, uh, 2019 capital request was submitted on October the 4th, 2017. And these are some of the projects related to this area that are identified. There is the new elementary school at Joppa Road, which is the one that we are focusing on that is within our study area. That's the new Northeast Area Elementary School that we have been working with. Um, there is also a planned new elementary school at Ridge Road. And this is the, right here, this is the Joppa view, the, the southern part of our study area. And that Ridge Road site sits right down here. So it's not far from, from the southern area like we were discussing at the last committee meeting. This new elementary school at Ridge Road is anticipated to have 700 seats. The, uh, it is, um, there is funding in, uh, for uh, F, FY 18 and 20, and it is in the budget uh, to be, to be uh, uh, a project. Historically, these projects have, um, if they are at this, at this phase, they do follow through historically and, um, and get funding and come to fruition. So the anticipated completion is August 2020. Um, it should be noted that in some cases, the, uh, in the past few years, some of these projects have actually been bumped up to a, a, a sooner, uh, sooner time. Not to say that that's going to happen in this area, in this area or this particular case, but the anticipated completion date of this Ridge Road site is August 2020. There's also a planned Red House Run Elementary School, which is down a little bit further south here, and that is a 200 seat addition uh, plan for that school, and that funding is expected to come into place on two, uh, FY 2020 with an anticipated completion on August 2021. So you have about 900 seats in this region in the, in the next few years that are coming online to give relief to this area, which could also um, uh, uh, impact or um, help benefit Joppa View and Perry Hall and some of the southern uh, schools in our study area. A little bit further look on this is that a projected enrollment and utilization for schools adjacent to project schools, um, enrollment is expected to continue to grow in the northern portion of this boundary um, and uh, no additional capital projects are anticipated. Although in, in Enrollment is expected to continue to grow in the southern portion of the region. Added capacity from the new school at Ridge Road and Red House Run will provide relief, additional relief. And what this table shows you is the FTE enrollment for those schools, for schools south of our study area, and the, the percent utilization and the number of seats they are over capacity in terms of enrollment versus um, capacity. And you can see it's 119 up to 123%. And then when the relief comes online, you can see it brings these, the southern area uh, south of us down to um, 105, 100, close to 100% utilization, which is, uh, um, which is really what the, the district operates on um, and, uh, and, and tries to strive for. These, these numbers are correlated to um, this list right here. So you could see the new elementary school at Ridge Road this, these schools are anticipated to get additional relief from, uh, from, the, from the construction of the new school and the additions that are coming online. One thing to note um, in this table, the schools that are listed as orange are ones that are, uh, that are not anticipated to have any additional projects to provide relief. Um, and so you can see Chapel Hill and Gunpowder are at the f further to the north, and they are not anticipated to get any relief, which basically means that the result of this process is, is, is supposed to carry these schools through the ne next several years. There is no other anticipated relief for schools in, in, in this particular area. So you have to look at the numbers and look at the, for the projected enrollment in some of these schools. Some of them are going up, some of them are stable. Um, and so it's just something to be mindful of when you start working through this. You see Joppa View and Perry Hall are listed, both they're in this particular process and they are also listed in the process for the Ridge Road uh, Elementary, the elementary school at Ridge Road. 
and schools that have an asterisk uh, exceeded 115% utilization in 16-17 and expected to grow over the next five years as well. And, uh, some other information for you, as the, as the district continues to, to plan and, and implement the, the new Northeast El Area Elementary School, um, they wanted to, to bring something to your attention and to, to, be, to be mindful of is the, the site that the new elementary school is being located on is, is limited in size. And so there is not a lot of space if, if say, the new elementary school does start to get overcrowded uh, in the future, there is, there is limited space for, to put portables on that property. Um, as it sits now, um, the, the, you can see there's, there are um, some, some topography issues that limit the size of the site in other adjacent properties. Um, so some current options under consideration, leave the new school at or near full capacity, um, and options for uh, providing capacity relief via relocatable units is limited at the site uh, of the new school. If they do, dis they, they do need portables in the future, it's likely that they'll either have to be housed on the uh, teaching court, which is a, the, the, the play area, or on um, uh, parking lot area, which is limited at this site as well. So be mindful of that and that the new, the new school does not have a lot of capacity to expand to put portables on it if, if it is necessary in the future. We don't have the, uh, the new data incorporated into your packets yet because we, uh, we just finishing up getting all of the student data mapped and we will have it for you after the public information session at the, the next meeting, we have two more meetings after the public information session, we will be incorporating it into the, your materials at that time. But we wanted to give you a preview, a glimpse on how the new enrollment, the, this year's enrollment compares to last year's enrollment. And so this is a table that's in, the, in a PowerPoint inside your slide, um, your PowerPoint packet, and also at the end of your packet uh, is a mat some materials that, um, that show this as well. So you can see this is the, the enrollment data that we are working with that is reflective in your packets right now. And then this is the 2017-18 September 30th preliminary utilization or the enrollment. And you can see right here, this reflects the enrollment change or how has enrollment changed from 16-17 to 17-18. And you can see some of the schools have gone up. Gunpowder is up 45, Joppa View up 32, Oakley's up 56, and then Perry Hall's up 21 and up 38 at Seven Oaks. Uh, Vincent Farm is up 17, but a lot of that, as we had discussed, the, the future development is, is a, a heavy amount of future development in uh, the Vincent Farm area, and, uh, but it just has not been built out yet, so it, but it is coming. On that note, you'll notice that there's another piece of information at your tables, and uh, I took this one from this table, and I'll give it back to you in a second. But this shows the, uh, the pupil yield data. So when you look at this table, it's, it's, it should, there should be a map on each of your tables. And it shows the areas that are yellow to brown in terms of the density and number of students that are expected to be, uh, come out of those areas. The green labels are the planning block numbers for your reference. And then when you look at the numbers on the each development, that, those correlate to a key that's on a table that's included on your map and that key reflects the number of students that are expected to come out of that area. So for instance, the darkest one down here is number seven, and that reflects Greenlee at Crossroads, which has 273 students expected to come out of that. And you can look at each other areas and, and see how many students are projected to come out of each of the developments that are in our study area. And I'll give that back to you guys. So that's another piece to be mindful of and to look at uh, based on your, your, your uh, request for uh, information, which is, a I think it's a very informative uh, map to, to study as you con uh, continue to do your, your good work. We have made a uh, couple of planning block adjustments. They are, adju they are adjustments that, based on your input, but they don't have any population in them at, th at the moment really to align with uh, future growth potential and also aligning with uh, major geographic features like uh, roads. This is one along Honeygo Boulevard where this planning block uh, stretched across Honeygo and you had made a comment about just keeping it right along, cutting it along Honeygo Boulevard. 
Um, and this is a planting block 163 now, and it's, it's been cut off and so that the, the walk area um, around Chapel Hill is, uh, com is its own planting block now. And there are some uh, other areas east of that that are also, that appear to be uh, walkable. But, um, but this, is, this is one adjustment that was made just to align planting blocks with geography per the considerations. There's another one, as we discussed, there was an area that, um, and that is um, along Cowanton Road, Cowanton Avenue, and planting block 25, and there was a there's development potential south of this area, and then there was a community on the north, and there was discussion about splitting this along Cowanton, and um, this is identified as well in your pupil yield map. You could see that this has, I believe, 20, about 22 students that are projected to come out of this development right here. Um, a multifamily development that is uh, yet to be uh, fully built. But this does have a, uh, a cut now, its own planning block, and it's planning block 164. There are zero students in it right now, but you'll notice I think it's option seven. This, this area feeds into the new school, and this area remains in Chapel Hill in option seven. I think in option eight, uh, they both may go, they both may stay in Chapel Hill, but you'll have to, to take a look at that and, ex and examine that. But that's another planning block adjustment that was made uh, based on your input. So we have created options seven and eight, which you have maps in your, in your uh, letter size maps inside your packets, inside your binders, as well as large maps on your tables. Um, the interactive map also has the options seven and eight uh, displayed on it as well. And we also have the maps um, posted back on the, on the wall that the observers are welcome to go look at as, as well until we get into um, our uh, final exercise for the evening. Um, option seven was built off of option five as a starting point. Uh, the Oakley satellite has been removed in both of these options. Uh, planning block 16 that has the walkable area of Kearney. It remains at Kearney because that is a walkable area. There are, there are it is a busy road that crosses over that. I, I agree, I've been there, but there are crossing guards and there are safety measures that are in place so those kids can safely walk across. And they, they could look out their window and see the school right there. I've been down that street and looked at it. The new elementary school zone is more compact and does not span as far south per your input and your feedback. And schools on the southern end of the study area are impacted less with the thought that they will and could get relief from the future school projects to, to help maximize the, the, the use of the new school in this area for schools further north that aren't gonna get relief in the future. And then also thinking forward and how um, some of those areas in the south will get future relief down, down the road. This is a screenshot of option seven. You could see the new school um, stretches and, uh, up in this area to relieve gunpowder and also give Chapel Hill relief. It also stretches across to this new development area that I had talked about with the new planning block cut. And then it comes down into uh, give R Perry Hall some relief here. Um, the new, um, the enclave for Oakley is feeding into Kearney in this area. And Kearney also picks up a little corner of Perry Hall down here as well. Um, and then I believe these coincide with some of the previous options that you had seen, some of the shapes of this. Chapel Hill does keep this whole area intact, which you had provided feedback on, and it was kind of negative in terms of uh, having this area be split. Going through quickly some of the advantages um, and limitations, as I mentioned, the satellite area is gone. Uh, capacity relief is provided to schools within the study area. Uh, Vincent Farm has a lower utilization in this option so that they can absorb future growth potential that we know is, um, is just uh, not far down the road. Uh, minority percentage for the new elementary school is close to the area average. Um, Oakley does split to one fewer middle school. Uh, fewer students in Joppa View and Perry Hall are impacted and, and for the reasons that I had mentioned earlier. And then all the students within a walkable area attend their school. Some of the limitations, or a limitation of this is that although utilization for the new school is balanced, providing relief in the future via relocatables will be difficult. So, so the new school is hovering close to, close to the 100% the, the capacity, and if that continues to grow in that area, there's gonna be limited future relief via relocatables, which a lot of other schools have that 
have that benefit because their site size is larger. Option eight looks a little bit different. Um, uh, different shapes around Chapel Hill and the new elementary school. You see the new school doesn't stretch as far south into Perry Hall in this, in this scenario. Um, we still have the same configuration between Vincent Farm and Chapel Hill here, except for this southern area feeds into Chapel Hill now. Um, you have Kearney picking up the Oakley satellite, but instead of picking up the bottom corner, it picks up a, the northern, um, sort of the southwestern corner of, of Perry Hall and closest proximity to Kearney Elementary School. The satellite is eliminated, like I said. It does provide capacity relief to schools within the study area. Uh, the new school does have a lower utilization and uh, as well as Vincent Farm to accommodate future growth. So this, this option does give the new school room to grow with the m being mindful of the limited site size at the new school as well. Um, it does have the most compact boundary for the new elementary. Uh, minority percentage for the new elementary is close to the area average. Just like in option seven, the Oakley satellite splits to one fewer middle school. And again, Perry Hall and Joppa View have fewer impacts um, as a result of this, with uh, being mindful of um, giving relief to some of, the, some of the other schools further north that will not have as much uh, relief in the future. And then all students within the walkable area can attend, uh, do attend their, their school. Some of the limitations in this one is Kearney is high. Kearney's at 113% by picking up this, uh, this corner of Perry Hall. It does bump up Kearney to a, a high utilization and it also, Perry Hall doesn't get as much relief in seven that seven gives because seven stretched down into this area of Perry Hall. Like always, I wanna remind you and uh, remind everybody that's, that's watching in the public that, um, that these are all draft and everything is subject to change. It's part of the process is still evaluating options and going through, uh, through this process of, uh, of trying to, to, to uh, narrow options at this point to come to, a, to come to a solution. We're not trying to find the best scenario yet or to find a recommendation, the best option but really what we'd like to do tonight is just narrow down from the eight options down to a smaller number. Typically we have, uh, usually we have about three options that go to the public information session. Not, uh, sometimes there's four, but we're trying to keep somewhere around that range, but it really depends on, on your, the results of your exercise tonight. Um, we're gonna perform two exercises to evaluate draft options and build consensus on them that are gonna be presented at the public information session. And then we're having an online survey at, for, as a result of the public information session so that we can get maximum input from the public. Uh, like I said at the last meeting, it's not going to be a open mic type of format at the public information session where each public member, is, they get in line and they come up and stand up and, and voice their concerns. That limits the number of, the amount of feedback that we can get from the public. It's best to, to share it through a gallery walk type format where the public can go look at maps and talk with committee members and myself and ask questions. Uh, and it's gonna be in this venue. And then we're gonna encourage the public to, to participate in a survey so that we can get maximum input. And that way people who don't feel comfortable coming up to a microphone are able to provide input as well. And we can get as many people. And we did this in Union County, North Carolina uh, a couple weeks ago. And we had uh, uh, 2,000 people participate in the survey. You're never gonna get 2,000 people, a time for 2,000 people to get up and stand and voice their concerns at a mic. And so it's really important to, it's really a data collection effort. We wanna identify common thoughts among committee members on options that best meet the objectives and uh, considerations of the boundary study as well tonight as a result of your exercises. With that, I'll hand it over to Ms. Bell. Thank you. Um, so before we get started, I just wanna review the norms for um, effective collaboration again. I know you've heard them several times, but I still just wanna reiterate um, so um, as you work together, we're just asking that you're um, being inclusive. Um, sometimes we practice stepping up and stepping back. So again, if you know you're a person who kind of dominates the conversation, just kind of step back and allow for maybe quieter voices. And if you're more on the quieter side, um, we're just asking that you kind of step up and um, maybe push yourself a little more than you usually would. Um, just allow adequate time for um, all voices to be heard and opinions and concerns to be um, expressed. And we also advocate for just taking a little bit of time to consider what's been said before responding. 
Um, our second norm is just to spend adequate time considering how each proposed change will impact um, all stakeholders. Um, and then simultaneously, just being mindful of the boundary study guidelines, using those um, guidelines as a lens to guide your decision making um, and even your conversations around, um, around the boundary um, options. Um, lastly, if conflict does happen to arise, just be mindful of your own body language tone and the way in which you're communicating um, and try to use I statements if something does come up, okay? So I just wanna briefly, um, thanks, describe what we'll be doing. Um, so you're already broken into your groups um, and what we're gonna do is look at each option and together in your groups, you're gonna identify three advantages for each option and three limitations for, for each option. So you have to come con to consensus around the top three and then for lack of better wording, your bottom three, right? Um, we're gonna give you about 30 minutes to do this and then we'll come back and, and share, okay? Um, so as we've been doing, we're just asking that each person um, take a role. Um, so the first role would be the discussion guide. This person, again, is responsible for um, just um, keeping track of time and then just making sure that this, the discussion is staying on track. Um, this could be shared between two people or one. It's up to you all. Um, we're asking that one person or more than one takes the role of reporter. So um, just know who will share out what, you, what the group um, came up with. Um, we're asking for someone to act as a scribe. So just recording any thoughts that come up as you're having your discussions and of course maybe writing down the um, advantages and limitations. And then lastly, we're asking for um, someone to be a parking lot attendant. So just to write down any questions that come up that aren't answered through the process or through your group work. Um, so just um, thinking about as you're looking at the options, these are a few things that we want you to consider in addition to um, the boundary guidelines. Um, so you're wanting to look at the geography, um, looking at the shape of the current um, boundary versus the option um, that you're examining. You wanna look at where the lines shift away from the current versus um, the option. You're looking at road networks, which you all have been doing all along, um, considering how school buses and parents would travel to and from school. And then you're also looking at natural um, features such as parks and waterways. Um, the other uh, um, thing that we want you to look at and evaluate are the tables. So looking at the balance of enrollment, considering um, future projected enrollment and future capital projects. Um, and then lastly, but not last, um, just um, inquiring how do the options support the boundary study objectives and considerations as you're moving through. So are there, are there um, any questions about the small group exercise and what you'll be doing? Okay, great, so we'll work on that for about a half an hour. We'll be around to um, assist if you have any questions, okay?
you guys have about 10 minutes to uh, 10 minutes to finish your thoughts on the advantages and li uh, limitations of options seven and eight.
Okay, so we have about five minutes. Uh, you could go ahead and um, just finalize your, uh, your thoughts. As we discussed, you're uh, just looking at the advantages and limitations for options seven and eight. Um, so just five more minutes, and then we'll, we'll have a discussion. Okay, um, are, we, uh, are we good to go? Do you guys think you're ready to report out? I think what we're gonna, what we're gonna do is we're just gonna have one group uh, 
talk about what the top three advantages and the, the, the three limitations that they observe for option seven to start. And then we're going to have the other groups um, then chime in on what, what may not have been discussed or any additional information that wasn't discussed. So which of you uh, as a group would, would feel comfortable kicking this off and talking about option seven? You guys want to go first? If you could, could you guys c come up and, uh, and, and just option seven. We'll do option seven. We'll let another group do option eight. Okay, we thought that option seven looked really good on paper. Um, we know with looking a little more deeply, people, um, the community looking, they may see where our streets cut off that we're not seeing, but um, we did have a suggestion. We thought that maybe Kingsville could get more kids um, to provide some relief we were looking at planning block 123 and planning block 133, 34, and 36 possibly going to Kingsville. And some of us at the table were just kind of wondering why we haven't done that for Kingsville yet. We know that we've heard that the bus route can be a long bus route, but we also said that they all come down to Perry Hall Elementary, I mean, come down to Perry Hall Middle and High every day. So it really wouldn't be that um, far of a drive up. We also said um, PB 164 could be more kids than projected when the apartments are built. They only have 22 kids projected to be in that PB 164 and there's 300 apartments being built. We'd um, foresee that being more than 22 children and that affects the new elementary school. Um, Oh, all schools get relief in this option except for Joppa View, but I have heard from some Joppa View parents that they would actually be okay with it knowing that they're going to get relief in 2020, that the idea of them not being affected too much is okay. And then um, somewhere in the email log, a parent was cons wanted to keep 148 and 153 together. And I just wanted to point out that 148 is only five kids. So if the parents are concerned about keeping that group together, I don't think that should be a problem. We don't think that should be a problem. <laughs> Thanks. Sure. Um, thank you. And so um, would another group want to share? Was there any information or any uh, feedback or share some of their discussions about option seven? Hello. Um, so we were looking at um, the new school being built and looking at how to get relief to the northern schools, and we thought this was a good option because it gave relief to gunpowder and Chapel Hill that might not get future relief. Um, on the flip side, we would have to worry about Perry Hall and Joppa View. They would still have to be overcrowded for those two years. But in the long run, we thought that would be a good option to help with those northern schools. And then it also left um, no room for growth with the new elementary school being built at 98% the way it is right now. So we were kind of talking, piggybacking on what they were saying about the, the students that, or the families that are only like five students in those planning box that wanted to stay together. And it's, it's 148, 149, and 153. And they're, I think that they're, and there's 10 there. So I think that their major purpose is so they can get to that new school. And I, you know, I brought that up within my group. I don't think I brought it up out loud. But from a parent's perspective, from you know a mom's view, not knowing what a new school entails, I would want new before I would want anything else. And I think that's what you know, you're gonna get in some of these areas where we feel like it's not that many kids to be moving here and there and everywhere. But when they're just trying to move just because they think that they need to be in a new school area and it could be a detriment you know, to us in the future, 
because um, right now, as she said, it's it's five students and 148, but in the email, it was two groups plan a box. That's already 15. And, you know, that's just how it kind of can grow, I think, in my own head, out of, out of control when, you know, people then start coming into these areas thinking, well, that's how I get to the new school, is to, you know, just move myself across the street or let me move in this area. So I just was piggybacking off of that thought. Sure thing. Thank you. Yep. Um, I just wanted to say for sharing purposes, uh, when a group stands up and says, okay, so PB 164, and immediately I go to a map and I try to locate 164, and by the time I actually locate it, they're done talking about it. <laughs> um, so I don't know if it's just me, is there a rhyme or reason of how the numbers are laid out, or maybe for a sharing purpose we can say, you know, PB 23 that's in the center of the Chapel Hill area, or maybe we can, just sure. so I know where to go yes. before I miss the whole conversation. Y yes, w we'll, we'll, we'll give you time, when, they, when they're referencing a plenty of block, we'll make sure that they point to it on the map so that you, everybody can orient to it, and so you can definitely keep up, no doubt. Anybody, uh, <coughs> any of the other groups have uh, other feedback about options seven and eight that they wanna share that they had in their group discussions? Um, yes, this group back here. And if it's something that you have marked on a map, you could, uh, you're, you're welcome to come up here and, and share with the group. The only thing that um, we brought up a lot of the same points that everybody else did, but one that wasn't brought up was this Northeast Area School. The span is still very long here. The community from the top to the bottom is a long span again. Um, and then Option, option seven also makes the capacity still high for each school. It doesn't give the relief for um, Vincent Farm. No, it did for Vincent. It was um, for Chapel View, but it leaves the new school high as well. Okay, thank you, yes. Okay. There, um, did you guys have some comments? Yes. I think we had a lot of the same comments as everyone else. Um, one disadvantage is that given the um, development that is coming uh, with option seven, there's about 50 to 60 kids coming to Chapel Hill, which will put them back over um, by about, what is that, about 10% um, with no potential relief for them. So I don't know if there's some way to plan ahead for that or, or, or something. Um, that's all, that's, that's the only thing new we had. Okay. Do any of the other groups have any other feedback that wasn't t discussed or anything they felt they wanted to, to share? Or, um, for option seven, for option seven first, and we'll jump to eight here in a second. Okay, so we're good on seven. So who wants to, who wants to kick off some of their thoughts on option eight? Um, do you guys wanna do this over here, and this, this group over here? Do you guys have some uh, comments for option eight? It's not upside down. <laughs> um, the advantage we had was that this had the new school at 87% capacity. Uh, although as we talked a little more, um, with the new construction coming to that area, we think that might be a little bit, uh, a little bit too much over capa under capacity because there's not as much coming there as to, to Vincent Farm and Chapel Hill areas, but it's still good that it's under capacity to start. Um, one way we had to solve that would be to add PB 164, which Nitsa is at the bottom of Chapel Hill <laughs> zone. That's where the 200 apartments are coming. It's not 300, it's, it's 200 apartments. They have it at 19 kids. The formula we've seen online say about 0 0.31 for apartments. Is that, I don't know if that's, yeah, I think you mentioned that when we talked. That's, that's sounds like it could be, you know, right. that's not an uh, unreasonable yield, yes. So 200 times, that's about 60 kids that could be coming to that instead of 19, which was, was what the county says. So if you have 62 kids coming there instead of 19, 
a solution for us would be to move that planning block to the new school, which would then have the capacity to handle that versus having that go to Chapel Hill, which adding 60 kids. Right now, a lot of the new development on that map is going to Chapel, Chapel Hill. Um, that's about, with that, you have over 100 kids going to Chapel Hill, um, which right now it would be even Steven given this option, but there's no way to relieve that 100 kids once we get a couple years down the line. Um, other advantages, there's very limited new construction at the Northeast School area, which is good, and that gunpowder and Seven Oaks are just under even, um, not counting the projections for this year. And also the Vincent Farm still stays, stays low at 88% to help accommodate all the madness coming down that end. Um, again, like we said, the limitations of this are that there's a, a number of planning blocks in Chapel Hill. This has 76. That's not including the extra kids that may be coming to those apartments. Uh, a limitation does raise Kearney to 113, which is not desirable for Kearney. And then uh, Joppa View stays at 119, but again, we've already talked about the relief potentially coming there. Is that everything? Okay. Thank you. One thing to note about the, the question about the yields is that um, the yields vary from, from area to from region to region. And I know that the, the, the district has um, undergone, a, there was a pupil yield study that studied extensive housing yields from existing homes across the county. So uh, the yields for multifamily development vary in this area versus the central part versus the northwest and southwest and northeast. And so, um, so that number is a, a, an accurate depiction of the number of students that are expected to come out given the same housing type that's being, that, 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 that exists inside this area. Um, not to say that if something changes and, and the developer puts in a different type of housing type or different price point, it may vary, but just wanted to make that note. Um, The, the, the question was, does that yield change? And um, I think the district has looked at pupil yields. They, they, they did it, in, I believe, in 07, they did it in 09, and then they also did it back in 2015. So they do revisit the pupil yield uh, uh, studies on a frequent basis to, to make sure that they can keep up with changing demographics and, and things. Just, uh, just a matter of note, just last week, the board uh, approved the new yield study. So that will be going up on the website very shortly. It's out in board docs, but they did uh, receive that as an information item. And uh, we expect the, uh, um, in, in, in short order, for those yields to go into effect. And those yields were used in the calculation of these numbers. Okay. Um, of course, the biggest thing in a yield study to realize also is that they're not time dependent. Um, as we know, development can take time to materialize and for those developments to mature and start having kids of school age. So there's not a time factor that is tied to, they're, they're, we certainly know they're not going to appear overnight in one year. Um, it's going to be over a matter of time and, and it's really not time dependent of how quickly or how, or how those kids show up. The only thing I, I would say and disagree, I hate to be the contrarian person all the time, but I have an apartment complex right here in PB 143 that has 79 kids that is similarly sized to what this is going to be. There's Perry Hall Apartments in PB99 that has 82 kids that is probably similarly sized in terms of scope to what this is going to be. So you can have your projections, but the real life, the real life numbers are right here on the maps. Mm -hmm. So I, I just disagree with 19 kids. That's just okay. silly to say that if you're going to be in Chapel Hill School District or the new school district, that if you're a parent and you can afford to get an apartment there versus but you can't buy a house, you're going to rent an apartment there and you're going to have more than 19 kids. And in a 200 unit apartment, and it will be immediate. It's not going to be let's move in here, have kids, and four years from now they're going to go there. It's going to be somebody living down in Canterbury, down Route 7, that moves up Route 7 into this new apartment complex mm -hmm. next year. Okay. Any other uh, comments? I saw some hands raised. Um, the number that really stood out to us when we were looking at the percentages was Kearney is at 113, and it doesn't look like they're going to get much relief from the new school. And then we looked at Seven Oaks that shares a boundary with um, Kearney, and they're at 99%. So is there a way to balance those out so that Seven Oaks is a little bit more and Kearney would be a little bit less, since it doesn't look like neither, either, either one of those will get relief? Okay, we can, we can certainly look at that. I know that some of that that high utilization of Kearney is also because it absorbs some of Perry Hall. 
and Perry Hall is expected to get some relief in the future. So that could be another consideration is to possibly undo some of the area that was added to Kearney so that they don't end up going so high, similar to what how Kearney looks in option seven. Um, but just something to consider, but I will take note of the uh, Seven Oaks and some of the other adjoining areas as, as a uh, possibility. So piggy piggybacking off the fact that Kearney is going to be starting at 113, uh, we came up with what could possibly be a solution, and that would be taking um, PB 81 and 83, which is on the east side of the Kearney um, boundary on option eight, and we saw that there's 87 students in PB 81 and zero students in PB 83, and moving them to Perry Hall that is slated to get some relief in the future. Yes, ma'am, and that 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 is a uh, was what I was just de uh, describing, so that that's reinforcing. Yes, ma'am. Thank you. Um, who else wants to provide some input about either the discussion or about option eight? I just had a quick parking lot question for eight, and I just wanted to know, you talked a little bit about portables and schools having property around. What is um, Carney's ability for expansion in that way? Do they have space in order to relieve, because if they're a little bit less, if they're, well, in option eight, they're at 113, but it <coughs> seems to be one of the better, if it is the better of the two, I don't know. But do they have the ability to be expanded in that way since they won't really be getting much relief for those two years, I guess, in, unless it splits down and goes you know, to the new school that's coming in a couple of years? But that's my question, can they, put anything on their property? Can they expand with, within their property, unlike the new school area, which doesn't have the room for parking and or portables? Um, just taking a quick glance at the acreage, Kearney is, does have a, 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 a higher acreage. It has a 17 acre lot. Um, I'm not really sure about some of the constraints with the actual physical site, but I know that it, it does have a 17 acre lot, which isn't, um, ex, uh, Expansive. Carney is Carney is uh, yeah tapers off and fields and hills. Do, I don't know if they have portables currently on site at Carney. Okay. How many portables do you have at Carney? The back of the school butts up to a um, a hill that is the entire back of the school, and our fil fields are at the top of that hill. So um, it, there, it, th they told us if we were to um, receive another portable, it would go on the front lawn. Yeah. Okay. Which you do see that in some other schools around here. That not to say that right. you know we're trying to r reduce the number of portables that are being used. Absolutely. So. Okay. Thank you for that. Yes, that's helpful. Okay. It looks like. While we do agree that option eight does leave Kearney at 113%, our solution to it was um, not necessarily someone over there to, said to, take, to take Planning Black 81 and to put it into Perry Hall. Perry Hall is at 113% also. I know they're going to get relief in the future, but that's going to put them um, oh, 100 and some kids over, and I just don't think that that's fair. We suggested that um, we're going all the way up to the top, down to the bottom, so planning black 123, which is gunpowder right now in the gunpowder Kingsville, taking 28 of those children and sending them to Kingsville, taking a planning block from gunpowder into Seven Oaks, and then- Which one was that? Which uh, we didn't choose which planning okay. block, but it could be um, 115, 114, something along, or 115 and 114, 115 and 114 going into Seven Oaks, and then Carney like PB 75, 74 going into Seven Oaks. Does that make sense? So 123 going into Kingsville, and then to get that back, they would take from Seven Oaks, Gunpowder would take from Seven Oaks, and then Carney would give to Seven Oaks. Like I said, okay. we didn't have every planning black 
block mapped out, but we do think that if Kingsville can provide relief from the top, then we can shift it that way and not necessarily over to Perry Hall. Okay. What other thoughts do you have about option eight? There's a somebody a hand back here. Chris has got it. I'm not sure this is so much about option eight, but there's a lot of talk and weight put on the new school, not Northeast, but the one to come in two years time. And to not know what the capacity will be at the other schools at that time, plus any additional building to provide relief for job review and Perry Hall, that kind of leaves us in a bad spot. You don't know what's down the road and you, you're, you're gonna rely on all of that and that could not come to fruition. Not the school itself, but what they have. There could be building development in those areas and leave those schools in the same situation. So, okay, so your, your concern is that, op that uh, option eight doesn't give enough, any relief to, to those two schools. Seven or eight or five or four. They don't okay. provide any relief. You don't know what kind of building is gonna happen in the area, in the Fullerton area or further down uh, to say, oh, now all these kids can go there. We're gonna be over capacity again. Okay, okay. I know that we, uh, that there is, um, that those schools are anticipated to be part of the discussion for the new school, but I, you know, I, I hear you and I understand your, your concern. I know that those schools are over capacity right now and they're really strained and so, um, Okay, uh, any other feedback regarding option eight or any so of the options? Yes, this is a general question. Um, I noticed the trend is, you know, new schools, 700 seats, 725 seats. Is there a rule as to how high a s an elementary school can go? Is it a budgetary, like why are we not building a thousand seat school? Well, I, th um, I think that I will probably defer that to BCPS in terms of, uh, I, uh, I know that, that your historically BCPS schools are small, I mean, because uh, 100 years ago they built them about 300, and you see those all over the county. The, the model that you see co going into to new school construction is around the 700 number, and in my experience in working across the country, that seems to be about the, the, the average number for an elementary school. You get a uh, much larger than that. Um, you don't see too many that have, that are much larger than that. But I do, I do think that the school, that the district, uh, has 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 modeled new school construction to be around that 725 number. Is that is that correct? Um, just to piggyback a little bit on that, I know there's recommended sizes and that we are looking at 700 or so seats, but if I'm looking at the chart correctly, we already have Vincent Farm at 888 students and we also have Chapel Hill at 814. So would it be able, even if it doesn't go up to 1,000, can it go up to 850 because we know more students are coming into the area? If they have studies and uh, they're mentioning historically, well, historically, when I grew up around Chapel Hill, it was all farms. I, I don't think we can go by historical guidelines anymore. We can go by actual factual 800 plus students at schools. Is it maybe time to change that guideline to start making elementary schools fit the community that they're in? Well, one thing I know is that uh, the, this committee um, don't have doesn't have the uh, is, is isn't 
isn't charged to evaluate the size of the schools that are being planned. Um, you're, you know, you are working with what is given to you in terms of how many seats are being planned for the new schools for the construction. Not to say that if you have thoughts about the school sizes that are being planned, it's something that you could voice, uh, voice your, your considerations and your thoughts to the school board and or uh, via the, 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 the comments and things like that. But I do know that we, that we as you as a group don't have the authority to uh, recommend a hot bigger school sizes and things like that. Uh, you, you, this, this group is focused on boundaries around the parameters that, that we are given, which is the school 725 um, students. Not to say that that's you know, something that you favor or not, but that's what, that's what you are working with. Right, yeah, I understand our, our yeah. job. I just, I hope they take this in the constraint issue when we're trying to move things around and we're start, still starting over 100% capacity with future projects, that's all. But I understand yes, our responsibility. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I just wanted to say um, on to the, that table's point, they were talking about moving the Kingsville, and we did. I well, I did suggest that. I really originally thought because my question was, is Kingsville untouchable? <laughs> but what I what was brought to my attention, which makes sense, and if it, you know, you guys, if you agree or disagree, but is it be that same situation that we talked about last week, where you have people going to school? Uh, five or ten miles away and they have a school right across the street and that's that looks like if you kind of cut that little hook there you know those I, I'm not sure if I'm talking about the correct planning block but I'm looking at 123 which I know is not a lot you know a ton of students but um, and you got that 124 over there with the 22 and they're going all the way up and I, I I would assume that if you speak to them going all the way up to Kingsville that's probably a very long drive the transportation you know I don't know what it is because I'm not very familiar with that area but I guess that was my biggest concern when she had mentioned the ability to maybe give Kingsville a little bit more because I know it's very scattered that was another thing that was said like all of these blocks aren't as concentrated obviously mm -hmm. as here there's not so many homes but right. is that would that be with transportation that's my my concern be an mm -hmm. issue when you kind of cut move them all the way up the way you were discussing you know, I did drive up to Kingsville last meeting, and um, you know, it's it's it's. It, I th I felt like it was a hike to get up there, but uh, you know, it, it's all everything's relative in terms of like they had said that driving to, they come down to middle school, so they're used to that commute as well. But did you want to respond? Here we go. Uh, and this is just coming from a parent. When you're not from here, it really does seem like a hike. I have to say that, but. Kingsville statistics and the type of school that it is, they're, they're very highly ranked. So if you talk to some of the parents, and I believe there's one in the email that wrote that they wanted to go there, because even though they may have a school that's very close, Kingsville's blue ribbon goes a long way. So, and the transportation thing, like I said, all that transportation ha comes down to Perry Hall Middle and Perry Hall High, so it's been done. That was kind of our thoughts on that, because it does look like a really far <laughs> span, but it would be nice to talk to some of those people in those planning blocks and see how they would feel about it. Okay. I think we gotta, you know, remember why we're here, and we're here for all the schools, and try to get relief to everyone, and not say, well, I want to go to Kingsville because they're a blue ribbon school, so I'll be willing to move, because it just affects everybody. It's just a snowball effect. I was on the Victory Villa boundary meeting, so we gotta kind of, <laughs> it just snowballs out. So we just gotta be mindful of that. Okay, um, one final thought, and then we want to get to the next exercise here uh, for tonight. Mm -hmm. Okay, so looking at um, this slide, that was with the capital projects, so to tell us, like, who, if someone's listed in orange, there's no additional projects planned for relief. If there's green, they have the potential. So Vincent Farm has an asterisk 
they exceed 115%, but yet they're not listed in the green. And we were just kind of looking at the map because I was thinking about if Gum Spring or this Ridge Road is coming, there's a southern part of Vincent Farm that may be considered for mm -hmm. that. And I'm just thinking that, but we don't see it reflected. So right. R uh, remember, Vincent Farm did get relief from the, Vin the Victory Villa process that's not, that's not being reflected yet. Okay. Um, and uh, so they do have some additional relief from that in addition to this. So they were a two-part school in both, both phases of this process to get relief. Um, not to say that that area may not be part of that, and it's something that we, c that we can certainly note mm -hmm. as an observation to, to share with the, st the BCPS staff to consider, to, have, to give them more relief if they do get overloaded with future development that's coming right. online. Because then that leads into my next question, and there's a lot of debate about, well, how much relief do we give Chapel View and Perry Hall Elementary School in particular because we know there's another study coming, but Vincent Farm is kind of in that position right now. So, mm -hmm. you know, it's like, do they still have yet another study coming to help them or is, is this it? And again, how much consideration do we give that? And if we are not going to give Perry Hall Elementary and Joppa View Elementary the relief mm -hmm. now, how much of a, do you kind of make it like a, not just a suggestion, but this is what needs to be done for that mm -hmm. next study to make sure that they get the relief for that study that they didn't get here. Right, I know that that list that you see there is not the official list of schools that are gonna be part of the study area for the new school that's being located at Ridge Road. That's just a, a, a list of schools that are adjacent or in the, in the immediate vicinity. So it does not uh, finalize the, the study area for that, th that project has not been defined yet. So um, there is potential for other schools to be on that list that that are near that site to give them additional relief. Um, okay. okay, so we want to go get into, we had about 7.30, and so we'd like you to, um, to get into this next exercise. Um, yeah, I'll just do it really ahead? quickly, yeah. Um, so um, this next activity is just a, it says consensus building, but it's an um, individual um, exercise. Um, what we're asking you to do is just to review the materials again, and you're looking at all eight options. Um, and we want you to decide on your top three. You might not have a top three. So um, I, I just say that to say that you'll be given three stickers, but you don't have to use all three, um, you know, depending on, on where you stand regarding the, um, the options. So you're gonna place, there's maps in the back, and you're gonna place the stickers or a sticker on the boundary option that um, sits right with you. Um, you're only allowed to put one sticker per map or per option. Um, and as I say, you don't have to use all of your stickers. Um, for this exercise, principals um, will not participate, um, at least in a placement of the stickers, but in a follow-up conversation, you know, you're more than welcome to, okay? Um, are there any questions about what's next? Okay, so um, Chris has, yeah. When you're ready, Chris um, has a sticker, so you can just go over to him to grab your stickers and then proceed to the back to, to place them on the options. And to clarify, I count 21 voting members, not including our principals. Uh, so when you're ready, after your discussions, please come up. I'll have you initial next to your name on the sign-in sheet, and I'll give you your three stickers. Um, and again, is everyone clear on the sticker placement? You can, you can vote for up to three options, no more than one sticker per option. Everyone clear on that? Every person, each voting member, not including the principals. And please put them all in the, um, uh, if you put them in the right margin, top right margin of the map, all the stickers together so that we can get a clear count. That would be helpful. Thank you. have to place all three if you don't want to you mm. right so when you are ready to place your stickers if you feel like you're ready to to do that you can go over to Chris and sign out sign in so that we know who has gotten stickers and then you can the maps are in the back of the room over here and as Chris said place them in the top right so that we could see the clustering of stickers to be able to uh, study it
I still have a few stickers here that are unsigned for. And just as a point of order, our vote count is up to 22. Uh, we had one committee member not sign in, so our vote count is 22 voting members this evening. Just to get an idea, how many of you still need to place your stickers? Okay, just a couple. That's fine. We, we've got some time. It's uh, no worry.
as the committee uh, finalizes their uh, the placement of their stickers, we want to have a discussion after this. Um, is it okay if we if we do extend a little bit beyond our eight o'clock time, so that we can have a discussion? It won't go. We will we will be as fit time efficient as possible. I think we do have to have a brief discussion after. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. We still have one member who hasn't signed out for their stickers yet. Have they, are, um, are they aware of that? She's working on it? Okay, okay, that's fine. Okay, 
we got uh, it's 755. Who, who has not placed their stickers yet? Is it as have the committee's um, committee members placed their stickers? Okay. Well, um, we have our we have our uh, maps back here in the back. I'm going to walk back here and. Um, if we could, as a committee, we could just kind of um, either either you guys are welcome to group around me and look at the look at the maps. Have have all committee members placed their stickers? No, no they have not. not okay, okay, no problem. We'll give you a, give you another minute. Sorry. No, you don't have to place your stickers. You could if, if you're yeah. You don't have to, but I don't want to. I don't want to rush you either. Okay. Um, do you have a pen on you? Okay. All right. So let's take a look here. So we've got one sticker here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one has two stickers. We have zero on option four. Uh, zero on option five. One, two, three, four, five on six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, twenty, fifty, sixteen on option seven. And then we have two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen on option eight. Okay. So what we like to do is we just like to start, um, I think that the ones that have zero stickers, I think it's probably safe to say that we could take those off of consideration. Is, um, is anybody opposed to doing that? Okay, so we will, take, we, will take, we will take the ones with zero options four and options five off for now. Um, with option one had one sticker. Um, we want to make sure that we capture any, any nuances of the option that you felt was positive. And the, the, uh, so anybody who placed their sticker on here, um, do you want to share what, what compelled you to put a sticker on option one and what, what high points or what positives led you to place a sticker on option one? Uh, yes, ma'am. So I was just looking at um, some of the communities where I don't like the whole wraparound, I do like that uh, some of the communities are uh, con uh, continuous, they're not as choppy. Although this does wrap around uh, the Perry Hall School, everything else looks a little bit more consistent instead of uh, little pieces hanging off here and there, and that's why I went with that block. Okay. Just, yep. Okay. Um, okay, thank you. All right, thank you. Um, well, I, is it, I think it's, is it safe to say that we could take this one off and we can look at, um, look at components of this as ways to maybe build on? Is anybody opposed to taking option one off for, uh, for the public information session? Okay, thank you. Okay, so we'll take option one off. Um, what about option three? It has two stickers. Um, anybody who put the sticker on option three feel like sharing what they felt was a positive for option three, what they liked about it, something that maybe we could build on to enhance some options that do make it forward? Well, we didn't have them rank these stickers. We just told them to put on the three that they felt. And uh, so they may, be, they may be ranking them internally, but we're looking at kind of broad perspective, the, the top three. As a, a, a point of order and clarification, Matt, as we're, as we're um, eliminating options, could we please get a, 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 both a confirming and a denying vote, so all in favor and all, any, anyone opposed? Okay. On, on both sides of the, of the spectrum, please. Okay, yes, you. Then, then you want to start with option? Sure. Um, well, okay, for the zero options, the ones that were option five and option four, um, all that are in favor of, of, of removing those from consideration, raise your hand. Okay. All that are opposed to removing those from consideration, raise your hand. Okay, so we do have consensus on that. 
for option for option one um, all that are in favor of removing that option one from consideration uh, raise your hand okay and all that are opposed to uh, removing option one from consideration for the public information session uh, raise your hand okay so we have z zero hands raised for option one okay for option three does anybody want to share their thoughts for option three that um, you don't, don't feel like you have to but if you feel compelled to share what you felt that was powerful about option three that you liked we can possibly benefit from that okay um, so all who are in favor of removing option three from consideration raise your hand okay any opposed to removing option three okay so we have zero opposed for option three okay let's look at the next uh, option six has five stickers on it anybody want to share their thoughts on option six uh, that people who felt that it was a, a an option that had some merit to to put a sticker on Yes, ma'am. I did choose that option. I think that it provides equal relief to all the schools. I know that um, it doesn't give everybody the best ca capacity and still leaves Vincent Farm High and the new school with not a lot of extra seats for development, but I do think that it equally distributes the relief. Okay, okay. So, yes, it does have a, a balance of relief. Um, anybody who is uh, in favor of taking option, uh, option six uh, off for consideration for the public information session, can you raise your hand? Taking it, option six down from, uh, from consideration for the next, for the public information session. Okay, do we have anybody who is opposed to taking option six down from, uh, the, from the board? Okay, we have two, uh, three, three uh, committee members who were opposed. And, d and you're, uh, you're opposed to taking it down, uh, is it for the same reasons that was expressed here? Or any other, any other feedback or comments? Okay, okay. Well, we do have a majority. I think option six will um, will uh, will will uh, come come down. Um, so we do have th that leaves us with three options. Uh, we have option two. Um, what are your thoughts about option two? People who put we have nine stickers on option two, so we have a, a decent number. Uh, what are your thoughts on option two? People who were compelled to put their stickers on for option two to to keep it in the uh, keep it in the running for for consideration. Does anybody want to provide any thoughts about option two? Okay, so we're we are at a point where we could um, go with these three options. We have three op we're down to three options that we can take to the public information session. We do have uh, three uh, two more meetings before uh, after the public information session so you still have time to evaluate and further refine these scenarios um, so um, you know you do have the you do have the potential to either take it down or to leave these three and take these three to the public information session it's really up to you uh, what what you would like to do um, so any anybody who wants to take option two uh, to keep to, to take it down and not share it at the public information session uh, raise your hand so this is to keep to, to, to take option two off of the table for consideration uh, for the public information session okay anybody who wants to keep option two on the table and still look at it and evaluate it uh, raise your hand okay so we do have a majority of, uh, of people who have who have raised their hands to keep option two on so that so this option will carry carry on to the next uh, public information session yes ma'am you have a question how many options do 
would you want to have to present to them? Is, is it that you want three or? Well, it really depends on the committee and what the committee feels. It's really up to you guys. Um, you know, typically when we go to a public information session, we have about uh, three options is about the, the, the average of what we typically share. So what is that, two, six, two, seven, and eight? Two, seven, and eight are what's still up on the board. I think those are good choices. What do you guys think? <laughs> yeah? <laughs> well. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Well, for the information session with next week, what, do they only see the maps or do they also see the statistics of where it would land with the capacity? They, they will be a statistics table as well. So if, if these were the three options to present, for example, we would have several stations set up around the room with those three maps and a, stati and a, and a statistics table of equal size with the statistics for all for each map. Yes, ma'am. They will be shared. All the information you you have considered will be shared with the public at the at the meeting. So, will our feedback, for example, we talked about positives and negatives of the options, will they be, I guess, up there so just even people can see where our, what our thinking was to understand why we chose these particular options? Yes, it's. We have. We'll, we'll have the options. We'll frame the, the 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 work that's been done to date by the committee and how the options have evolved into this process and talking about how many options have been considered right. and what the statistics are. And we will encourage the public, what the public can do is the public is welcome to go back and review materials that have been shared and discussed because all this information is posted online. Okay. And any member of the public, if they're interested in seeing conversations, all the live streams are saved, they can go back and watch all of these meetings and, and, and catch up on, on how, how this has evolved to this okay. process. I missed it when you asked earlier about two. I was one of the ones who voted for two, and it may not be necessary to give feedback now since it's one of the three, but I didn't know if you still wanted to hear that or not. If you want to provide some feedback on option two, yes, absolutely, certainly. So I was one of the ones who chose option two, and what I liked about it is that it spread. I thought it also distributed fairly evenly, and although Vincent Farm was low, I felt like those, the two schools that were higher, Chapel Hill, and even Perry Hall with some minor revisions of maybe moving things to the right, kind of doing a domino effect. We could increase Vincent Farms to a little bit higher than the 81% and then yet still get Perry Hall Elementary and Chapel Hill Elementary down to lower numbers. Okay, so, so, th so that, that's, that is notable and it's, um, like I said, we have two meetings after the public information session where modifications can still be made to these scenarios it, to, to try to enhance them and, and bring them closer to our, your overall considerations. And then once we get to the point where you feel like you have some good scenarios to, uh, to get to a voting process, then you can evaluate refined, a refinement of this option. Yes, ma'am. So the five that we took off the table for the public information session, are they gone forever? Well, they're, they won't, we won't be sharing them. We're gonna condense the, the, the number of maps for you to review and the statistics into a, 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 uh, to reflect just these uh, scenarios, whatever scenarios you choose to go forward with. But you can always go back and reference those maps and from pr prior meetings and look at components of those maps that you like to see about possibly making adjustments to, for the high points on other scenarios that may not have made it. Um, that you can that you can incorporate into these scenarios. Any other other comments? Well, rather than have the big maps, can we have the small ones here to, on the table for the other choices? Yes, yes, we will provide you the, the, the eleven by seventeen maps at future meetings to make them more manageable, so that you can filter through and study them uh, easier. Yes, ma'am. Say again, I'm sorry. You were, you were going to condense what we have down to the, to the those three, those three choices. So for the rest of them that we took down, is could you have them in these, these size? As, as a point of order, what we're, go we're gonna have the large map stations for the public forum. So that right. the, the, they will be posted on the wall at several stations throughout the room. At the, few, at the final meetings, uh, yes, we will absolutely provide you the 11 by 17s of the remaining options, yes, absolutely. Is there still going to be tweaking to 
option eight or option seven, option Absolute, two? Absolutely, okay. absolutely, yes. These are still draft and still, you have two more meetings after the public information session. See what the public says, what input you get from the public. And these are still, there's still time to refine these maps and make them, uh, bring them closer to the overall considerations and objectives, absolutely. Okay, um, so I think that we do have consensus to take option two to the uh, public information session. Um, we did establish that. Option, option eight, we have 14 stickers. Um, does anybody wanna provide any feedback that you didn't provide in your group discussion regarding option eight? Um, as you can see, it does have a, a large number, one of the, the, the second highest number of stickers um, that, are, that have been posted up. Okay, um, so, all, yes ma'am. At our table, one of the things that we like the best about that map is when you look at the colors of the schools, they look like true communities. They aren't so stretched, they aren't so scattered and divided. They l you can look at it and see a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, um, does, does anybody, um, is anybody, everybody who is in favor of taking option eight to the public information session, Please raise your hand. Okay, and anybody who is opposed to taking option eight to the public information session, please raise your hand. Okay, so we have uh, nobody who is opposed to taking this option eight to the public information session, so this, this one will go as well as option two. Option seven had the largest number of stickers. It had 16. Um, does anybody wanna share any thoughts about option eight? Uh, Option seven. Yes, ma'am. Um, although option seven personally affects my family, that's not what I'm here for. That's why I really like the numbers across the board. It gives Vincent Farm true relief. I'll start uh, with 86 students less than capacity, which will allow for future growth. It keeps everyone right near that 100% mark as close as possible except Joppa View and Perry Hall Elementary, which are the two slated schools to get that future relief. Yes, ma'am, that's a, a good, good observations. Um, anybody else wanna provide any comments about option seven? So everybody who is in favor of taking option seven to the public information session, could you please raise your hand? Okay, anybody who was opposed to taking option seven to the public information session, could you please raise your hand? Okay, so we don't have anybody who was opposed to taking option seven to the public information session. So um, these are the three options that we will take, um, knowing that you could still, still study the, pr the ones that were removed from consideration, still look at components and the positives of those and try to build them on these. Um, Yes, one thing that we will do be doing is in order to, so, that it's, so that it's easy to understand for the public who may be looking at this for the first time, what we do at this point is we typically rename these options so that they're in, they're in sequence so people don't say, where's, well, two, seven, and eight, well, where's three, four, and five? What, so what we'll do is option two will be option A, and these are in no important order, order of importance. Option seven will be option B, and then option eight will be option C. So we will be taking options A through C to the public information session, which are, which are these options, and um, see what the public says, and get some input from the public, and then continue to evaluate those after that session is complete to, um, to see if we can make refinements to the scenarios that, uh, that bring us closer to your overall objectives and considerations. Um, so, um, some final, final thoughts. I think I, I made it pretty clear on the format of the public information session. It's gonna be a gallery walk. It's gonna be here in this, in this building, in this room, which is a very good space to have this. We'll probably have two or three copies of the map spread out so that the public doesn't bottleneck on a map. And we'll have committee members coming, and uh, we'd like to have you here at 6.30, if you could, to give you a little orientation so that you could see how the maps are laid out. 
Um, we will have, as Chris said, we'll have the maps and then we'll have a large plot of the statistics next to the maps so that, so that you can so that you can look at the stats as well when you're talking to the public members and look at the maps and look at both features like you have been doing. Um, so it's more of, a, more of a gallery walk style format and then we will have a, f a survey formatted that really we will be encouraging the public to, to participate in an online survey, which any member of the public can participate in, even, even you as committee members can participate in that survey. Um, there will be no dinner provided at the public information session, just something to note, so if you could come, uh, come, <laughs> sorry, you could I know that they, they're spoiling you guys here, but, um, so, but the, this is next week, it's Wednesday, October 25th, so we're, we're a week away from, from having the public information session. And then after that, the next committee meeting will be November 15th. So if we could have you here uh, at 6.30 next week on Wednesday, and then, um, and then we will go from there and I look forward to, uh, to sharing this information with the public. Uh, does anybody have any final thoughts before we adjourn? I just have a question. The online survey, is that only available to the community members that come to that meeting or if they don't make it to the meeting, would they be able to take the survey? That's a great question. Anybody, if you cannot come to the meeting, you can still participate in the survey. We'll, we will leave, uh, there's a time frame a window of, of opportunity after the, after the public information session where any member of the public can go view the uh, live stream of the, of the presentation like we have this and then they can look at the PowerPoint presentation and the materials and then participate in the survey if they couldn't make it to the, to the meeting. Yes, ma'am. Well, I really appreciate you guys. We extended a little bit over our time tonight and thank you for your dedication, your commitment. You all have a good night and we'll see you on Wednesday, okay? <laughs>